Hey, what's up, Zag Nation? You're listening to the Gonzaga Nation podcast. I'm Cole Forsman, writer for Gonzaga Nation SI, and I'm joined by fellow writer, Gonzaga student, and co-host of the Gonzaga Nation podcast, Henry Kruger. Henry, how are we doing today? Doing good. Just, you know, getting back into the swing of things. The semester just starting up, um, but doing good. How about you? Yeah, you know, kind of in the same boat. Um feels like it's like the dog days of the semester. Um, I don't know, sports itself. It's like college basketball is great. The NFL is winding down. That's, you know, kind of sad point. But, um, yeah, you know, just kind of looking forward to better weather um, and more basketball yeah. around the country. So, yeah, I don't know. It just feels like, yeah, in a, in a low point right now, at least in Spokane. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And, you know. Kind of, kind of with not, there wasn't a game here over the weekend, not much going on. I don't think men's or women's play here over the weekend. I think maybe the women won the road too, could be wrong. Um, but yeah, just not a ton going on. Yeah. The Zags, they were on the road, of course, we know, uh, on Saturday against St. Mary's. Um, yeah. Uh, Zags led by double digits at one point, um, but the Gales, uh, came back to win it in overtime behind Aiden Mahaney in his brilliant second half. Um, I don't know, watching that game from home, it just it, – it was weird to watch. It felt like Gonzaga had control, um, and then all of a sudden here came St. Mary slowly but surely. I don't know, how, what was that like watching for you uh, wherever you were? Yeah, I mean, I was I was watching at home. It it – it really just felt like this one kind of got away from the Zags. Um, like you said, they led for most of the game, even by 11 points midway through the first half. And, you know, at that point I was kind of like, you know, maybe we underestimated the momentum um, Gonzaga had coming off its win against Santa Clara, but, you know, St. Mary's hung around and they lingered around. And that's something that a number of these WCC teams have done this season. And Aiden Mahaney got hot, brought them back into the game, kind of reignited their offense and, there wasn't much the Zags could do about it. Um, so, I mean, it was, it was a tough, tough way to lose for sure. Definitely an epic, epic um, collapse for Gonzaga. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, what did you think? Obviously, you know, you were watching it covering the game. You yeah. It's kind of the I, same thing. Yeah. It, you know, up 11, it, it, it didn't feel like up by a whole much and that it really was just because St. Mary's wouldn't, I mean, Gonzaga, got out to that 11 point lead because they played fast. They got the Gales. I mean, the Gales started like, I think four for, I don't know, terrible start shooting and Gonzaga just did what they did. They took advantage of it really quick. Um, They sped up the Gales that way. They even showed a little pressure um, on defense, but then it just, it slowed down. The Gales made a few shots and that's all it took for them to sort of slow the game down. And eventually that defense Gonzaga, you know, kind of cooled off from the field. And at that point, St. Mary's didn't climb back in the game right away, but it just chipped away. I mean, they cut it to, I think, two late in the second half or early, late in the first half, sorry. Um, And then Gonzaga stretched back at five and it kind of stayed that way. And it never, it felt like Gonzaga had the lead, but maybe not control if that sort of made sense because the Gales, you just kind of waited for it to happen. Aiden Mahaney, slow first half, but uh, yeah, that's sort of how I kind of felt about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious what you think. I'll tell you what I think um, on whether this this game crowns St. Mary's as kind of the team to beat in the WCC. Personally, I don't think it does. I mean, they didn't come out and dominate Gonzaga, you know. You, you did a better job of putting it, you know, Gonzaga was not in control for most of the game necessarily, like completely in control but it was still kind of their game to win or lose. And it seemed like they just couldn't hang on. Um, St. Mary's uh, Logan Johnson and Ada Mahaney combined to shoot 12 for 33 from the field. Right. I mean, those are not shooting numbers they can rely on to beat, you know, teams of Gonzaga's stature, you know, day in and day out. Right. And that team still shot 25% from three point range. And a lot of the game was a struggle offensively for them. And so I think I'm curious what your thoughts are, but I mean, for me, it does not necessarily crown them. I know there are two games ahead of Gonzaga in the standings, but it does not crown them um, kind of the team to beat um, in the WCC. Yeah, I I don't think it it does necessarily quite yet. 
Um, I don't think this, like you said, Gonzaga um, wasn't really, it never seemed like they were out of control at least. Um, you know, they led for most of the game. St. Mary's, they have a blueprint though to be the team to beat, if that makes sense. Um, they might not, you know, put up a bunch of points on offense. They might not play very flashy. Um, Aiden Mahaney is winning WCC player of the week, pretty much at Jalen Suggs's rate. Um, it's pretty much his award at this point, um, like eight or nine times now. Yeah. I mean, I, on the flip side, Gonzaga hasn't even had a freshman. I don't even know, play a minute of college basketball yet this season. And it, it might be the first year they don't have a freshman on you know, the all freshman team since like 2013, 2014, something like that. It's, it's been a long time. Um, and so it's kind of interesting seeing that contrast. Um, another thing I thought was interesting is that they didn't attack Mahaney more often down the stretch. I think he had four fouls for a while. Um, I was kind of waiting for them to attack him because um, he was picking up the ball a lot, you know, being a guard and stuff. And I was also surprised that um, they, they kept switching on pick and pick and roll ball screens where Nolan Hickman would switch off guarding Mahaney. Cause I mean, Nolan Hickman was doing a great job. Um, I saw a thing on Twitter from Stephen Carr. He basically said that um, Mahaney was 0 for 5 when guarded by Hickman in the game. And then kind of when Hickman wasn't on him, he was a lot more efficient. And I think we saw that. I was also surprised Salas wasn't in the game um, down the stretch a little more often. Um, or Bolton. I know he had four fouls, um, so it's different. But, you know, I was, I was surprised. I was surprised also that on offense, they at the end, they kept trying to rely on Timmy to make it happen when – you know, obviously it was Timmy was playing well, but, you know, it's it's a lot more predictable when you're trying to get that last shot from a guy in the post or, you know, down the stretch. It, it makes Gonzaga a lot easier to guard, at least in my opinion. Yeah, no, 100 percent true. It, it, to your, yeah, I mean, Nolan Hickman was outstanding against Mahaney. I mean, I I, I hadn't even heard of uh, Mahaney's name come up in the first half. It felt like um, because no one did a great job. Uh, but he is an outstanding player. There is a reason why he keeps racking up these awards as a freshman. Um, yeah, and maybe, I mean, back to your point a few minutes ago, I mean, St. Mary's having the player of the year, arguably, almost. I mean, that's how it's shaping up. Uh, maybe that, that that gives them a very strong case to be the team to beat. Um, it'll be interesting to see when they come to Spokane um, on the 25th. Uh, how that game will shape out. But um, yeah, I think Gonzaga, um, they played great defense. It's it just, it's tough when St. Mary's just will wear you down at the end of the game. I at Gonzaga, I think in regulation over the last four minutes had, I think four shots. Um, they went three for four. Like they shot well in the second half. It's just, they only shot, um, let me 19 times compared to 23 for um, the Gales. It was Gonzaga's lowest scoring second half, I believe, of the season. And simply because they uh, also gave up the ball eight times compared to only one time in the first half. So, you know, St. Mary's well-rounded team. Got to give it to them. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I mean, they played played well. And obviously I meant, meant no disrespect by saying I don't think they're the, they're the number one in the WCC completely yet. I still <laughs> think it's kind of a – you know, it's a little more crowded at the top. And I think a lot of Gales fans want to admit, I think it's definitely Gonzaga St. Mary's right now, neck and neck, obviously just talking about this season. Um, but yeah, like you said, it, it did take a pretty serious collapse for Gonzaga um, to lose this game. It, from what you said, lowest scoring half of the season. I mean, that's pretty remarkable considering that they've, you know, matched up against a ton of nationally ranked teams and, and stuff like that. Um, even in conference play. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. And then obviously looking forward, kind of what are your thoughts about San Francisco? Have you thought too much about that so far? Well, it's just a big stretch for Gonzaga in general. Um, Thursday with San Francisco, you know, they've played Gonzaga really well. Uh, the first yeah. match of the season, it took Razier Bolton's put back um, at the buzzer. I mean, he had a phenomenal second half that game. Um, and right now, you know, the Dons in the standings, um, right now four and seven in conference play, uh, 15 and 11 overall in the season, but you know, they always play Gonzaga hard. Um, they match up well, 
And then, you know, beyond that, then you have BYU on Saturday as well. So, um, yeah, it, it's going to take – stretch. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's going to take a lot for the Zags, um, especially bouncing back uh, from that loss. But what are your what are your sort of thoughts on it? Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's disappointing that San Francisco is, you know, playing the way they are in conference play and, and not that high up in the standings or really have, you know, tournament aspirations because they're such a fun team to watch when they're going – I mean, Shabazz and Roberts, I mean, they're really kind of a two-man wrecking crew when they get going. Both heat check guys, feast or famine. Um, I think I saw a thing that was like Shabazz has scored 20 points in 10 different games this season, but has also finished in single digits nine separate times. So, I mean, it's it's really if he's on, he's a little bit more of a chucker uh, when it comes to shooting, just in terms of his shot selection. Um but yeah, I mean, when, when he's going and you saw it last time they played Gonzaga, right? I mean, they, him and Roberts got going early on and pretty much sustained that throughout the game. And it took Bolton's putback, you know, to get it to go. And I think at that point of the season, we were like, wow, is San Francisco like a legitimate, you know, number three team in this conference behind Gonzaga and St. Mary's? Haven't seen that as much play out. Obviously, they lost to Santa Clara in their last game, but Shabazz had 31 points. I think Roberts had like, 17 18 so you know it's definitely a two-man crew to watch out for if you're the zags and san francisco is the team where they can really upset anyone if they're kind of rolling offensively yeah i mean we know that they love to you know chuck up threes um it's sort of a running gun offense they lead the wcc uh well and away in three-point attempts and um i mean against Against Gonzaga, they shot 10 for 23. Um, that was a brutal stretch, you know, defensively having to deal with them. And then I think that was also around the BYU time as well. So, um, but yeah, Roberts and Shabazz, um, that backcourt is really special. Um, it's going to give Gonzaga a lot of trouble. But um, back on our home court, um, I can see the Zags uh, coming out with a newfound passion after, you know, Saturday. We'll see if um, – the offense can sort of get back into a rhythm. Um, and then going forward, you know, you got BYU um, coming to town as well. That's another big game. So yeah, see how this week plays out for um, Gonzaga. Drew Timmy, uh, it's also worth mentioning. We know he's chasing the points record, um, but he also just needs one more field goal uh, to be the all-time field goal leader uh, in Gonzaga program history. I phrased that terribly. But, um, yeah, so another milestone. For Drew Timmy, of course, he's well on his well on his way to becoming the program's all-time um, scoring leader. What do you sort of – how do you feel about uh, Timmy's season so far, you know, him just racking up accolades um, amid this sort yeah, of – Yeah, it, stretch. yeah. Stretch, yeah. I mean, it really just feels like at this point he's reaching a milestone every night, um, whether it's tying records, passing people in the scoring list, breaking records. Now he's number two on that list. I mean – it's it's been pretty phenomenal to watch um but it kind of looking at the season as a whole you mentioned that Mahaney has a chance to win WCC player of the year and i think that's an interesting conversation cuz it's like Timmy's season he had a stretch where i mean i even wrote he's playing the best basketball of his career and then pretty much right after that it's been a little bit more spotty last two games obviously he's played well um so it's it's been an interesting season and i think he knows that every time that he's asked about the milestone thing, he says that, Hey, I'll, I'll appreciate that when I'm done right now. I just want to win. So I think you can kind of see that his main focus right now is, is on his performance or Gonzaga's performance, I should actually say. Um, but I mean, it's, it's been really cool to see um, definitely, you know, an all time legend in this program. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of crazy to think that, you know, sitting here, I'd, watched him all four years I've been here and then you as well the last two it's it's great to, it's awesome to see especially rare for a big man um yeah as and as he keeps climbing up he's you know brought up the point that it's just you know he's just trying to win um and do whatever it takes and um but it's still historic nonetheless Timmy you know he, he did have that great stretch right it was like 27 and a half points a game on yeah yeah beating. Um, national player of the year conversation once again. Um, and then, you know, like you said, as soon as WCC play starts, um, 
the numbers have sort of came back down to earth. The last time against San Francisco, he shot three for 16. Uh, I don't see that happening again, especially at home, uh, but we'll see. Um, yeah. And of course, we'll always keep track of every little milestone that he breaks. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like you said, I mean, the San Francisco game, that was that was definitely his worst, I think, his worst game of the season. Three for 16 shooting. Um it, he just he couldn't get it going and San Francisco put kind of two bigger seven foot guys on him that didn't really have anything any kind of offensive bag but were just big guys who would annoy Timmy and and that was a problem and so I think going into this game like you said is that going to be a lot more prepared to deal with that kind of pressure in the paint you know from the Dons yeah yeah for sure we'll see how that plays out um on Thursday at 6 p.m. Dan Dickow's jersey also being retired that night. I think that's very worth mentioning. <laughs> Shout out to Dan. Um, Shout out to the boss. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, good. I think we're good. Yeah, I think that was great. Uh, that was cool. Okay, good. Um, I didn't even have a timer. That was probably like 20 minutes, so. so that was okay, cool. Yeah, let's do a little outro. Um, did I write one down? I didn't write one down. Damn it. Oh, well. That's going to do it for this episode of the Gonzaga Nation podcast. I'm Cole Forsman, Henry Kruger. Joining me as always, Liz. Oh, I fucked that one up. <laughs> All good. All right. Okay. <clears throat> That's going to do it for this episode of the Gonzaga Nation podcast. I'm Cole Forsman. As always, Henry Kruger, thanks for coming in today. We will catch you all next time. Listen to the Gonzaga Nation podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts.